If you clicked on this video, you're more than likely wondering, how the heck do I make this shift from learning in school to learning as an adult? There are so many things you can learn. There are so many ways that you can learn them. But sometimes the skills that we've learned earlier on in life don't necessarily to apply to the point in life that we're at right now. Hey, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. I wanted to spend some time in this video digging into how you can take notes to learn effectively as an adult. Let's dive in. To start off with a little bit of a background about myself is I have a four-year college degree. I went to high school just like every other kid in the United States does. I got good grades. I did really well. I felt like I was a good learner, but then I got to adulthood and I kind of found myself in this position of how do I actually learn what I want to learn? I didn't find it as easy as I thought it would be. And a lot of that was because of how school set me up to think of how learning happens. So this is kind of the big concept that I want to cover today is that there's really a shift in learning models that you need to make when you're transitioning from being in school to being an adult and in quote unquote grown up life. There is a difference in how schools tend to work, especially in the United States versus how learning for life and adult life works as well. Modern school tends to drive repetition. There in the United States, standardized tests have really caused this push towards teaching for, uh, for those tests. That means you need to learn specific information or skills and be able to repeat those skills when you get to that test so schools can continue to receive higher amounts of funding for education from state and federal levels so that students can continue to get that kind of education going forward. The downside that I've seen and in my own experience throughout schooling is that this often comes at the expense of critical thought. It becomes the exception versus the rule in classrooms. Instead of learning how to think through something and being able to pick through an idea and come to your own conclusions about it, a lot of times you're taught what you should think and what the ideas are, what the facts are that you need to know going forward. Repetition, I'm going to say, and this may be a little bit controversial, but repetition in itself is not learning. Repetition can cause you to remember information. You memorize information, but at the core of it, the question to ask yourself is, does that information stick with you? But even deeper, does that information change you? Is the information that you learned in school affecting the way that you do life and think about things throughout the rest of your life? I'm sure there are some instances where that is the case where you learned something that was extremely practical or where that information changed your life and you changed your behavior as a result of that. But there's a lot of information that we needed to learn in school that was largely just, we had to memorize it to get through the test so that we could get to college, to get a job, and then move on into the adult world, into our careers and family lives and so on and so forth. However, this memorization approach does not necessarily work very well in adult life. When you get accustomed to doing something in a specific way, you sometimes have to back away from that and start to undo those mindsets and processes that your brain works on. And this, the reason for this is that learning is a lifelong endeavor. It's not just something that you do to get to an end goal, but learning really is the process of life. You can be in a situation and learn about that situation just by being there if you can critically think about it. So where learning in school is about regurgitation and memorization, learning beyond school into adult life and for the entirety of your life is about digestion. So the mindset shift changes from how do I get good grades to how do I become a better person? Lifelong learning is focused on rounding yourself out and learning in areas of your entire life. This can be inside of your work. It can be family related. It can be being a husband or a wife. It can be related to your finances or relationships or some hobby that you have. But it requires more than just memorization. The goal of lifelong learning is to learn how to understand ideas and come to your own conclusions so that you can implement those ideas and they can actually affect you. 
when you can process through ideas critically, the thing that you can do the best then is take those ideas and actually apply them to your life. If you're just taking in information and trying to replicate it in your own life, that's one way to do it. But you have to figure out what works best for you in that process. So to sum up all of this, it's important when you're lifelong learning, when you're focusing on lifelong learning to learn how to think, not just what to think. There's a lot of people out there who will want to tell you what you should think, what you should do, who you should be, but instead you need to spend some time learning how to think if you're struggling with that because you have a unique mind you have unique experiences, and the information that you take in, if you can critically break it apart, can cause you to learn different things than other people from it because you have a unique viewpoint on that. When you can learn how to think, how to break ideas apart, that is what enables you to consume that information effectively and be able to use it to benefit your life and other people's lives for the better. So how do you get there? I think there's really two main ways to do this. The first, I think, is to chase what you're interested in. For example, earlier on in my life, I got interested in leadership. I was not a leader. I didn't have a supervisory or managerial position at work at that point in my life, but I got really interested in the concept. And I just chased that. I consumed books. I listened to podcasts. I watched videos on leadership. And I started to get an understanding of what that world of leadership looked like, what it meant, the different ideas that were there. And then at a certain point, I wasn't as interested in pursuing it anymore, but I was able to glean all of this information and understanding from just chasing my interest in that area. And the other idea here is to take notes. And that's what primarily we're going to cover in this video is the main processes and ideas that you need to understand in taking notes to learn how to think and be a lifelong learner as an adult. So the first thing to understand with note taking for lifelong learning is to understand the purpose of taking your notes. Notes is to ultimately augment your ability to think on your own. A lot of people can't necessarily process through ideas just in their head. You can't just take an idea and chew on it and chew on it and chew on it in your brain in order to get the total meat out of that idea or to connect it all together. In fact, what a lot of people need to do is have some kind of external place where they can put their thoughts because as you write your thoughts down, you tend to make connections to other thoughts as well. And at that point, you can start to see a bigger picture of where that piece of information fits in the things that you might already know. So you can use a tool such as Obsidian, like I talk about on this YouTube channel, you can use a paper notebook, you can just use a scratch pad, but have some place to augment your ability to think on your own. Also, the information that you capture must have a purpose. This is where we get into talking about the collector's fallacy. The collector's fallacy is essentially the idea that something might have value in the future. And if it does, then you should probably collect it. And that's a good thing. And you should keep as much of this stuff as you possibly can because you might need it in the future. I know I'm totally probably butchering collector's fallacy in that explanation, but just because you can get something and just because you think something has value doesn't necessarily mean that it does. But if you have a purpose for the notes that you're taking, say you want to learn a specific subject area and you're focused on just pulling out the nuggets, the things that make the most sense to you, then that prevents you from collecting all this extra stuff that you don't necessarily need, but it allows you to focus on developing the thoughts that you're interested in building going forward. Secondly here, it's important to start capturing, but capturing your own thoughts. So say you're reading a book and you're very interested in the subject matter and you read a, a block, a paragraph of some sort that sparks a thought in you you're really interested in this idea. What do you do with that? Well, I know one way I used to approach note-taking is say I was reading on my Kindle, I would just highlight that passage or that sentence that really grabbed me and move on. That I have found doesn't necessarily work. 
In fact, one of the things that I have found that that causes me to do is it gives me the satisfaction of like, oh, I've captured this thing. But then when I come back to that quote six years later because I come across it, I have absolutely no idea what that meant to me at that moment in time. Okay, that's an interesting quote, I might ask myself, but what does this actually mean? When you lose the context of something from the moment that you encounter that information, you often lose the ability to capture that information properly. When you don't have that context, it loses its weight, it loses its importance. So when you're capturing your own thoughts, when you're listening to a podcast, when you're reading a book, when you're consuming a blog article, when you're watching a video, when you're capturing them down, be sure to capture the interesting facts, the things that grab you, but also write down any thoughts that come to your mind, even connections to other works or ideas. So this is basically summarizing what you're experiencing in that moment, what you're thinking in that moment into your own words. It can be literally summarizing a paragraph that you just read in your own words, or it can be writing down, hey, this made me think about these ideas over here, or hey, this made me think about this book over here. I've done that numerous times when reading books. In fact, I've even done it at times where the books aren't even in the same genre or space, but there's an idea in there that makes me connect the two together. And lastly here, don't just read for the sake of having read. Otherwise stated, don't just read the book as quickly as you can or get through the video as quickly as you can. If you're pursuing information, if you're pursuing learning because you're interested in a subject area, just soak it in, enjoy the process. But the goal here is to read and understand what's being communicated. This can be really easy if we're interested in something. It can be really easy if it's something we already agree with, but it can also be really difficult if we don't fully understand that subject area or if we don't agree with it. However, there can be value in digging into those things. What's most important though, is just capturing your own thoughts. Even if it's something that you disagree with, if you have your own thoughts on it, write that down. It's totally okay to wrestle with an idea in this process. Number three. So you've got your purpose outlined for why you're taking notes because you want to genuinely learn. You've started capturing your thoughts in whatever tool it is that you might have. It can be obsidian, it can be on paper, it can be anywhere else. Now, maybe you've been taking notes for a few months and you have quite a few. Maybe that's starting to feel a little disorganized. That's totally okay. You don't need to jump ship, you don't need to panic. This is very normal. So the point here is to structure what you have. You can utilize an organization structure inside of your note-taking tool of choice that makes sense to you. If you use a tool like Obsidian, you can use folders or links and using structured notes that you can link big picture topics to and then link more deeply into the details from there. If you're using something like Apple Notes, you can just create little buckets for different kinds of information. If you're using paper, maybe you're using note cards, you can start to organize those in a way that makes sense to you. But that's what is the key thing here. Don't try to find an organization system that works for someone else. You can pull ideas from other people on how to organize your thoughts. But the only one that's going to know how to use this system effectively is you because you're the one who are making the connections. So the connections and ideas and the structure that someone else has in their note-taking system that they're developing very well might not necessarily make sense to you. So if you're using a tool and you like using it and you have a specific way that you like to organize things, awesome, follow that path. And if you don't know where to start with structuring your information, I would just start with some folders if your software allows that. And if you are able to do something like structured notes or have these notes that kind of form indexes almost inside of a software like Obsidian or Rome Research, you can dive into that as well. The most important part here though is to just start making sense of the information you have and putting it in an organizational structure where you can find it and get access to it in a way that's easy for you to do so. Then the last idea here is to process and develop the ideas that catch on with you. So as you're going through your notes, one of the things that I like to do is I'd like to go back through book notes that I've read. I just put them all in one big note 
and have all the thoughts and quotes that I have pulled out of them in that note. And then later on, I'll come back and I'll just say, hmm, these ideas really catch me. And then I'm asking myself questions. Why did that idea catch me? What does that mean to me? And then you can write more notes on those ideas and flesh out what you really think about that process. And ultimately, the idea here is to not just have knowledge for knowledge's sake, but to be able to dig into those ideas so you can actually apply them to your life in a meaningful way. So as you dig into them, maybe you uncover a new way that you hadn't realized before to structure something or to think about a specific area of your life, or maybe it's your finances and maybe you decided as a result of these, this note taking that you need to restructure the way that you're doing your savings, for example. It really can go as deep or as broad as you want it to in this process, but the point is to get in there and critically think through the ideas that you're learning and then just keep going deeper on the things that are interesting you which takes us to the very last step here, which is to repeat the whole process. Make sure that you have your goal clear. Start capturing your thoughts and your ideas when you are digging into books and notes or thinking about certain subject areas. Start to organize those things in a way that makes sense to you and then think critically on them and dig a little bit deeper. Write your thoughts out a little bit deeper. Write your thoughts out a little bit more clearly than maybe you did the last time. Refine those ideas as you go and then keep going through this process. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to show you my Obsidian Vault at notes.justinderose.com so that you can get an idea of some of the things that I'm learning and how I've implemented this process myself. Okay, so this is my... Obsidian publish site. So these are the notes that I've chosen to publish publicly that I have been digging into. You can see that this is my dashboard note here, but you can see that I've got a number of different launch points here. This is kind of the most important things. And the area that I've been learning lately is marketing because I have a lot of new job stuff that I'm doing in the area of marketing. So if I click into there, one thing you'll notice about this is that this is a MOC note at the top, maps of content. This is really just a root note, a structural note that I talked about in that presentation. If you have a subject area that you're interested in diving into and you're using a software like Obsidian, one thing you can do is create a map of content to dig into that area like I've done here. Now I have other maps of content here as well because they are more specific areas under the topic area of marketing. So I have Google Analytics, content marketing, advertising, marketing metrics, and so on. I'm sure I'll add more areas under here in the coming months as I'm consuming more information and learning more about the marketing topic area. So if I click under content marketing, you can see that I have some articles that are linked here, B2B content marketing and five reasons content marketing is important. And then I also have another MOC here because YouTube is a channel that you can use for content marketing. So I've got an article linked under there. I'll go back here. And then you can see how I'm taking notes on some of these items. So you can see this article from Ahrefs, how to build a winning content marketing strategy. I've just linked some basic metadata up here, author, type, topics, link, right back to the blog post so I can get back to it if I need to. And then I've just taken notes on the ideas here and I've tried to summarize them in my own words. And this, since I'm just learning this topic, it's a little bit more uh, on the memorization side or trying to rephrase uh, what's been written in the article than in other areas where I feel more comfortable. So for example, in the productivity world, I like to just largely write my own thoughts out when I'm consuming information. But because I'm learning this brand new, I am summarizing uh, other people's information uh, a little bit more than I am otherwise uh, in other places. So this is just one example of how I'm consuming information. I'll read this article, I'll write down my summary. Uh, I'll show you a little bit what the productivity stuff looks like though. So this is just another structure that I have for a productivity map of content. If I go to, let's see, I'm actually gonna look for time off that book. Here it is, uh, the book by uh, Max Frenzel and John Fitch. 
excellent read if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet. But what I've done here is that I haven't always just clipped quotes into this. Instead, what I've done is that when I, something strikes me, I am just writing my thoughts down. So after reading the first few opening sentences, I'm realizing I'm already okay at taking time off. It's an attitude and mentality of disconnecting from work. I'm synthesizing ideas already. And all I'm doing while I'm reading this book is I'm typing it into a note on my phone or writing it down on a piece of paper and then coming back to my note-taking software and putting it in there. That is really what learning as an adult looks like. It is not this defined process that happens, but it's really a repeatable habit that you can build to try to transition yourself out of this memorization, teach me what to think mentality into let me learn how to think and let me come to my own conclusions. So did this help you? I really hope that it did. I know that I have struggled along in this process, but I wanted to share with you some of the tips and ideas that have helped me get out of this memorization process into being able to more effectively think for myself as an adult. Well, that wraps things up for this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, be sure to hit the subscribe button and let me know what you thought in the comments. Again, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.